In what should hopefully be the not too distant future, we're going to start seeing MacBook Pros and MacBooks running on ARM-based CPUs, similar to what's being used in the iOS devices at the moment, and Apple are referring to this as Apple Silicon, and we're all very excited about them. But the reasons for that excitement, I think user to user, vary based on what you use a Mac for. For some people where you're a professional video editor, maybe you want to export videos faster. If you're just a general user, maybe you're excited about having greater energy efficiency similar to an iOS device or maybe you're hoping that the price of Macs will start to come down as Apple no longer have to source components from Intel. All very real possibilities, all very good things to be excited about. But, well, if you know my channel, you know I'm a gamer, and even though I don't plan on ever really using Macs as my primary gaming device, I can't help but be curious about thinking could we start to see better gaming performance on lower priced Macs as a result of the move to ARM? And I wanted to do a little bit of a test here with a game that could run on an iPad Pro 2020, the one on the right, and also on the MacBook Pro 13 inch 10th generation Intel on the left hand side. And so the game we have here is Sonic Racing, it's an Apple Arcade game, arguably one of the flagship Apple Arcade games. And it's quite a good example because although definitely a mobile game at its core, the graphics are pretty good for a mobile game. You're moving at a very quick pace and it's very demanding on mobile devices and even devices like the MacBook Pro 13 inch. And you would think if you just judged it by the price and the size of the devices that the 13 inch MacBook Pro would be the clear winner. But when I actually play both of these devices the same game, I have to admit running at the same graphics settings, I found that the iPad Pro actually ran at slightly more consistent frame rates. Now don't get me wrong, they both do a good job, but the iPad Pro, to my surprise, was a little bit better, which is very promising in terms of what we might be able to see from Apple's own silicon techniques. Because don't just consider that the iPad Pro, a cheaper device, seems to be ever so slightly more performant than the MacBook Pro 13 inch, but also consider other factors. What about the size? Well, the MacBook Pro has a lot more space in its chassis that should theoretically allow it to uh, better compensate for the thermals, but the chip inside of the iPad Pro is so efficient, it doesn't need that space in order to remain cool. And furthermore, once again, talking about thermals, what about fans? In the MacBook Pro 13 inch, when I was playing this game at the end of a 10 minute session, the fans were audibly going. On the iPad Pro, there is no need for fans. It just runs the game and passively cools via the metal chassis. And that, for gamers, is a very nice benefit because especially if you're playing a genuinely demanding game, uh, especially I've recently discovered on my 16-inch MacBook Pro, uh, you can definitely hear the fans getting incredibly loud, which can be distracting. But the thermals are so much better just around the chip on the iPad Pro that you don't have to listen to fan noise and it doesn't get as hot. Very big benefits, things that we shouldn't underestimate. And so if Apple can do all of this inside such a small 11 inch iPad Pro, what if they were given a 13 inch chassis in which to house an ARM processor or maybe a 14 inch chassis if we're lucky? What about a 16 inch MacBook Pro with all of that thermal space to efficiently cool the system combined with an Apple silicon chip? So although a lot of it is still theory and excitement, when I look at what my iPad Pro is capable of considering its price, considering its size, I'm genuinely very impressed. Everyone will have different ways of measuring it. You might just go by Geekbench scores. You might try to export one uh, video in LumaFusion and one in Final Cut Pro. Uh, but for me, I'm a gamer. That's naturally how I'm gonna start comparing devices and even if I take my much more expensive MacBook Pro and compare it to my relatively cheap iPad Pro and play the same game, a reasonably demanding game by mobile standards, uh, the iPad Pro just nearly comes out on top 
when in reality, if price was the true gauge, it should have been the MacBook Pro. And this is not me slamming at all on the MacBook Pro 13 inch. I recently made a review saying that it's a very good, very well balanced device. I really enjoy using it. But what we can take away from this observation is that the iPad Pro and its ARM based CPU is something that has a lot of potential. Now, whether or not Apple realized that potential and they managed to make all the necessary safeguards in terms of supporting existing software, well, they've talked about things like Rosetta 2 that might allow for this, but until I see it with my own eyes, I'm going to, I suppose, have a quiet caution around that. But in terms of what's theoretically possible with this approach, well, the results could be truly astounding. As always, people, thanks very much for watching and see you next time.